one. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. That's a nice hat you got there. You too, buddy. I wish I had one of those. <laughs> it looks good on you. I know it's not the uh, structured hat like you like, but it works. I, I like all hats. Uh, I just recently kind of got into the structured hat. Maybe uh, two or three years ago. I was not a fan. Uh, I thought they were too high. But I feel like they started making like mid-size structured hats. Um, so that's kind of my go-to now. But this is good. It's it fits my head. It's yeah. So anyone who's just listening, um, I am uh, speaking with Clay from Back Mountain Brewing Company, and um, he has the same hat on that I do, or I should say that I have the same hat on that you do. They are your hats. Well. We also had a really good company design that awesome logo for us. So, yeah, and that shirt is fantastic too. Like that. Not we sure where. You, Imagine that. Not sure where you got that from. <laughs> but, dude, thanks for doing this. Welcome to the award-winning podcast. I saw that. I saw yeah. that. How about it? How about it? Someone must feel bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you. I mean, even before. Uh, we started doing what we're doing and that is um, brewing a beer called pop goes Porter. Um, We started brewing that what September 24th. I think it was or 26th, one of the two. Um, And we are going to donate the proceeds from that beer to the Lake Lehman junior and senior high music program. And Lake Lehman has a uh, a fond place uh, in our hearts because we both went to Lehman. How about that? Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll get into that, but I mean, we have kind of a deep history that we didn't even know about. What's that? We went to high school together. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, you you were what two years behind me? I was two years two. behind you. Yes. Yeah. So you were with my sister in school. I, I was in the same class as your sister. Yep. Um, but I feel like I would love to see a picture of you from back then. Do you have any of those? Do we have one? <laughs> we might we might have one by the end of this all We're right gonna... well, because like i feel like now that i i you know I, we've worked together i know you now um you know we found out that we went to the same high school i found out that you were kara's uh brother um i'm like i think i can remember like seeing you now in my head back then i don't remember i remember the name and that was what i when i met you up at uh up at Axel Rad, I was like Popco, Popco, and that's why I was like, "Oh crap, I know that name." But then you said you recognized my last name, and you were like, "Oh, are you Kara? Are you related to Kara?" And then it clicked. I'm sure I do, man. It was just it's so long ago, and it's a long time ago, dude. I mean, I, I feel like that was all a dream. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Um, but I feel I feel like we both came. Uh, we've come a long way uh, since our our years at Lake Lehman, and um. I guess that's what kind of brings us to today. But I said earlier, you are the owner and brewer at Back Mountain Brewing Company, which is located in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Um, and I want to kind of find out how you got to that point. How did you start or how did you go from, you know, growing up in the Lehman area, you know, going to high school in Lehman to you know where you are currently? And uh, we'll talk about the future of Back Mountain Brewing Company. But um, you've, you've done a lot in between high school and where you're at now. So talk to me a little bit about who Clay is um, <laughs> and we'll get to where we are now. So uh, I'll leave out a lot of the details, but I wasn't the the best kid in high school. And uh, I got a little bit of trouble here and there. Uh, my what, senior kind of, year, what kind of trouble? Come on. What kind of trouble? Oh my gosh. Let's see. I was on probation, got arrested for possession and paraphernalia my senior year. Um, that was really like the nail in the coffin for me. Uh, my dad knew, uh, my recruiter and also knew the chief of police who happened to be my bus driver at the time, you know, small town kind of thing. Uh, and the three of them pretty much conspired and I got an ultimatum. It was more or less like, look, you're not going anywhere. So join the army or you're looking at jail time and a fine and all this other stuff. And I was like, you know what? All right, I'm out. And uh, <laughs> August of '99, we gra- I graduated in uh, June of '99. In August of '99, I was on an airplane headed down to Fort Benning, Georgia, to basic training. 
that's pretty much uh so was school just not like of interest to you oh no i was actually i was really good in school it's just um starting like i want to say probably <laughs> probably my sophomore year i started hanging out you know with the wrong crowd i mean we weren't doing anything wrong we weren't like hurting anybody or anything it's just right. we were partying, you know doing high school things yeah, high school stuff yeah and you know i kind of took it to the extreme and you know <laughs> got it all out of my system back then i guess <laughs> No, we were just, we were just being kids. And I, you know, I was one of the unlucky ones that got, you know, got in trouble and got caught and, and uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. A learning lesson, right? Yeah. Learning absolutely. lesson. Um, So you went to, you said the army? Yeah. Yep. Went to the army. In 99, huh? And how long did you serve for? 20 years. So I retired in 2019. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Right. It uh, it was one of those things like I joined, I was like, ah, I'm going to get the college money. I'll do four years. I'll get out. I'll use the money, go to college and then, you know, continue my life. But didn't work out that way. Um, just kind of right when uh, the Iraq invasion happened, I happened to be in Fort Benning with it with third ID at the time. And that was the unit that spearheaded that whole invasion. And I, I, I was remember, remember the, like the stop loss thing. They tell them they had the movie and everything stop loss. I was one of the first guys like in this generation to get stop loss. Like my unit got stop loss. Like I was supposed to get out and they were like, no, nah, you're not going anywhere. You're going to go to war. And they stop lost. Every, we had guys in my unit that had all their stuff turned in and they were like days from getting out. And they were like, no, go get it reissued. Like we're going overseas. And we went over and did the invasion. I came back and, they offered me a promotion and a new duty assignment up in Alaska. And I was like, yeah, I signed up and re-enlisted and pretty much just kept going from there. What year was that? Uh, it would have been 2000. We were married 2002, 2003, 2004. We got back and that's when I re-enlisted and um, headed up to Alaska. Now, why did you, I mean, obviously you said the promotion, um, but what, what was, uh, what intrigued you to, to reenlist when you could have been out? I don't know. I was kind of liking it. I was liking, uh, the camaraderie, you know, just, it was, it was a neat experience. I was going from, a from, a these is what I can put as a, a lower enlisted guy to, I was going up to like the first, the first step on the, the rung of leadership. And they were like, you're going to be a sergeant now. So I was going to have my own guys under me. And it was just, it was a new thing for me. I'd never been in a position like that. And when they offered me that and I took it and then they said, well, you got to reenlist, you got to meet time and service to take that rank. And I was like, okay. So I, and they said, Hey, we can send you to Alaska. I mean, I'd only, I grew up in Northeast PA, you know, my first duty station was Germany, which was awesome. I spent, you know, two and a half years over there and went down to Benning, but I'd never really been anywhere else. And Alaska just seemed at the time, I was like, man, that's cool. Like, yeah, just married. <laughs> like, Hey, let's move to Alaska. Like it, it'll be great. It'll be a good time. And honestly it was, it was, I had a blast up there. And how long was that for? Oh, we got up there like 2004. I think I came back in 2007. I extended the stay up there. Um, but that kind of got cut short. Um, but yeah, we got up there 2000, probably 2004, beginning of 2004. And I don't think we left till 2007. So we're up there for three years. Okay. A little over three years. And were you done at that point? No, no. no I, some... I, what's that? You still had some more years, right? Oh yeah. I was, um, basically we deployed again over there and it was, it ended up being like 18 months. We were over there for 18 months and I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I can't do this 18 month stuff you know i had a we were just married we didn't have kids or anything yet but being away that long so i started looking around for like other things to do in the military i looked at reclass and changing my job around and um opportunity presented itself uh i actually had a recruiter email me from the army special forces and i was like oh that seems like a cool idea like let's try that out so made it back to alaska uh we were back there for a couple months i put in all my paperwork did all the tests, everything they needed, the the pre-selection process. And I went down to Fort Bragg, did the special forces selection, and then uh, fortunately got selected, came back to my unit with papers that said, basically, you can't touch me. Um, Bragg has me now. 
and I'm heading back to, well, I had to go to airborne school first, and then I was headed to Bragg to do the qualification course for U.S. Army Special Forces. Okay. And then how did, I mean, you keep saying you just got married. Like, how, what was that like? I mean, you always hear stories about, you know, being married in the military and kind of, um, you know, obviously your partner understands when they mar- marry in the military and in the army and things like that, like they know what they're signing up for, but I mean, that still had to be pretty difficult. Well, charity and probably should have stayed at that beginning. Charity is also Lake Lehman grad graduated mm-hmm. with me. Um, high, school, high school sweethearts. What was high school sweethearts, oh, man, man. Wow. We together. What sophomore year off and on all the way through joined the military off and on a little bit. Um, and then I guess it was when I was in Germany, she came over, she came over to visit and that's when I proposed over there and uh, came home, got married in 02, uh, got stationed at Benning and then right back to where we went over to Iraq. And then the rest is history after that. I think it was, you know, we weren't like, you hear a lot of the, the horror stories in the military and it's young guys that they leave home for the first time. They get to a duty station uh, they meet a girl that's from the local area and they, you know, they fall in love or whatever. And they just, they've been together six months, they get married. And then, you know, two or three years later, you know, she's cheating or he's cheating. And it's just the way, the way the army works, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it a bunch of times. I've seen it with guys under me. I've seen it with guys over me. It's just, it's a stigma that's attached to the military. And honestly, I just think if, you know, people would actually have a foundation in a relationship that stuff wouldn't happen yeah i mean i don't even know if it's a stigma well i guess it's a stigma but it's just like i think it's a human being issue is you know not not a military issue it's just like like you're saying it happens you know you you get married because maybe you do it right before you leave because you know you don't know if you'll come back god forbid you know and, and shit oh, yeah. like that you want to make sure that you know you do that before that happens but so you're, what you're saying to me though is she was putting up with your with your shit Far before the army. Far before we joined the <laughs> army. <laughs> uh, honestly, like a lot of the stuff I did, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without her support. Like, I mean, even going through selection and everything, she, she always had my back. And no matter what I wanted to do, I mean, there was arguments and stuff as there would be with anything. You know, she worries like you're going from doing this job to this job, and you know, this job's more dangerous and blah blah blah. And honestly, like regardless of the fights or everything she, she's always been there she she supported me through the whole thing all the way through through the entire career right up we had our kid i mean we had the kid and i was gone 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 just constantly going and she she ran everything on the on the home front you know what i mean like just always stepped up always did you know pretty much everything she could do to make everything as stable as it could be they're good at that oh yeah yeah <laughs> we, we we wouldn't be around if it weren't for them no, absolutely. Yeah. Don't tell them that, but yeah, I mean it's true. It is... <laughs> Luckily, my wife won't listen to this, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean it's it's important to have uh, a good partner, especially when you're, you know, enlisted and traveling and doing risky shit. You know, it's it's good, it's to, good have. to have it's good to have that foundation that that anchor back home that kind of you know holds everything down and just make sure like when you're gone, you don't want to worry about anything. And it's good to have that, that other half back home that, you know, is doing the right thing. You know, right. it, it makes it a hundred percent easier to do what you got to do. Right. So you serve your time. Yes. What, uh, what, what, what kind of was the defining point to say, you know, all right, I'm done doing this. Um, well, I got hurt, um, which happens to most guys like, jumping out of planes, the body armor, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's either, it's going to be your knees. It's going to be your back. It's going to be your neck. It's going to be your shoulders. Something's going to go. And for me, it was my back. Um, we were, we were over in Thailand in between deployments and I I was already having issues with my back and, and it kind of sucked because I was only in my late twenties and it was kind of like in the prime, you know what I mean? Like everything was great. Uh, I felt great. I was in great shape and my back started getting, well, I started having issues with my leg and it ended up being my back. So I was doing physical therapy. I was getting shots in my spine, the steroid uh, shots to to cut down the inflammation and everything. And that was kind of helping it. But we were over in Thailand doing some training with the Thais and we were doing, <laughs> we we're doing medical training 
and uh, one of the ties had made a comment about um, buddy carrying. So a guy gets wounded in combat, you pick him up, throw him on your shoulder, and you carry him. And he was saying, well, what if the guy's bigger than me? Well, we had a big boy on my team. He was a big, big bigger guy, uh, is one of my medics. And I was like, oh, watch this. And I was like, I'll pick. And I knew I could pick him up. My back didn't know I could pick him up, though. And <laughs> I picked him up, and next thing I know, I was laid up. Uh, probably about a week and a half in Thailand. I couldn't, I couldn't get up off my stomach. Uh, everything just, my whole leg was shot and they ended up having to, I wouldn't say it was a medevac, but they ended up getting me a flight back early. And about a month later, I went into surgery back actually worked after that. My leg worked everything. Um, did my next deployment to Afghanistan, came back, everything was kind of working good. And then it just kind of started falling apart again. I started having issues down in my lower leg. We ended up finding it was nerve damage. Long story short, I couldn't jump anymore. I couldn't couldn't be airborne. Uh, the army wanted to med board me. I went down, fought with my unit. I was like, look, I got like, you know, four or five years left to retirement. I was like, just let me instruct or whatever. Uh, fortunately, I had a, a sniper qualification. So I got to go and run the unit run sniper course. So I did that for four years. And then I did admin for a year. Um, and after that, I mean, once you're, <laughs> once you're not down doing the stuff you want to do, like, that's it. Like, it's time to say, you know, I could have done, you know, 25, I know buddies that do 25, 26, 30 years, but after that, you know, it's like, if you can't do what you want to do, like, what's the point of sticking around? So it was like 20 years. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm not doing the admin stuff anymore. I'm not, you know, pushing papers and stuff. So it was time to, time to get out. Had a good run. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't know a lot of guys that have served. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I, I know a lot of people have served. Like this area that we live in, I feel like, you know, a lot of people dedicate their lives to, you know, keeping our country safe, which, and, I, and I'm so thankful for that. And thank you for your service. It's something that I know that I, I probably couldn't do unless I had to. Um, I don't do well with uh, people telling me what to do. <laughs> um, I'm surprised I'm still married because I don't like being told to do. <laughs> not that she bosses me around but you understand no i got you, I got um, you. but yeah i mean it's i mean it's it's a lot i mean i can't imagine you, you did it for 20 years and you see you saw a lot of shit in those 20 years um you know and you hear stories about people you know post service and you know being able to be a civilian again like mm -hmm. Have you been able to transition easily? Yeah, it's and that's and that's that was the cool thing about the Green Berets is like it's not you 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 kind of lose some of that structure that you have with the big army. Like in the big army, it's like you're talking to somebody that outranks you, you know, you're standing a certain way, you address them a certain way. And when you when you when you get selected and you go through the course and you finally get on a team and you can talk to your team sergeant by his first name, you know, a guy that outranks you by two, two ranks, you know, three ranks for some guys. And you're taught, you're calling your team leader, a captain by his first name. Like you kind of lose that military structure and it just becomes like, it's like a job, you know what I mean? And I think that's what really helped is the fact that I got to do that for 11 years. I didn't, I, I didn't come right from, you know, dress, right, dress, regular army. I came out and, Honestly, as I was retiring, I had some of the best leadership I ever had. I had, you know, my company commander, my company sergeant major, like when I said, hey, I want to go to school, um, can I can I get instead of six months, can I get a year to start school? And they were like, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. You, like you're not going to get that in the big army. You're not going to get guys that are like, yeah, absolutely. We're going to do everything we can to take care of you. Like you did your time. You know, you're not a shit bag. Like you're, you're you know. I, I did what they asked me to do and I did it the best I could. And they recognized that. So when it was time for me to retire, they gave me a little bit more leeway. So as I was transitioning, I was still active duty, but I was full-time college student. And that also helped a lot too, because it, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of culture shock uh, going back to school. Uh, the program I was in, we had, we had a, maybe two or three other guys my age and they were all military. Uh, and the rest of them were young, younger, you know, younger people uh, in their twenties. And it was kind of, I think it helped a lot with the transition was just getting that, that initial shock of school and you go into it like, okay, don't be, don't be that guy. Don't be that veteran. You know what I mean? Like just kind of chill out and just, you know, kind of meld into it. And that's what I did. And, and it really helped uh, with the transition over civilian life. Like I was ready. I was, 
I mean, I, I take a lot of what I learned in the army and I use it to this day, but I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be out there wearing my, you know, veterans hat and everything else. Like I don't want, you know, don't want the attention. And so, I mean, I'm a civilian. I did it. It's in the past. It was cool. I had a great time. I learned a lot, but this is who I am now, you know? Yeah. I, I just, it's also crazy to me. Like I just, I, I can't imagine what the, the whole process is like. I just, I, I, I can't. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's, everything's, it's, you're always learning. You're always learning. You're always adapting to, to different situations. Like if you can't adapt, that's where, that's where the problems start. You know what I mean? Like when you can't, you can't like integrate into a different situation and you're stuck, constantly stuck in the past. I think that's where, and I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, but I think that's where a lot of guys run into problems is they, they, they just can't, you know, accept the fact like, Hey, it's over, man. Like that was it. Like that was your run. Like now it's time to do something else, you know, and that's where, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of my friends, they get out, they they'll contract, you know, and there's good money in that. And I don't knock them for it. I think it's great that you can do that. I mean, you're still around it. They're still around that, that culture. A lot of guys will get out and they go work for, you know, private companies, private security, stuff like that. Or they get out and they, they do marksmanship training, you know, cause what do we do? We shoot guns. Like they know that, you know, it's comfortable for them. To me, I was like, you know, that was one part one part of my life and now it's time like it was good and i i enjoyed every minute of it but now it's time to go and do kind of do something else yeah and kind of detach from it yeah well i imagine like i mean it's such a an important time in your life you know, you know a lot of kids they start when they're 18 right and it's like those especially those like first you know 5 10 15 years like you know you're talking being 25 30 35 years old like those are like you mentioned before like prime years like you become an adult like your brain fully develops at 25 right so it's like i can imagine that's why a lot of people they you know they can't learn to you know kind of close it off because that's all they they've known for their you know early adulthood and it's probably hard to to kind of separate yeah well i mean and it's not all great you know what i mean there's there's i mean regular army stuff sucks. Like I hate, like I hated it when I was younger. Like I hated the fact that I had some guy who I was probably smarter than telling me what to do, telling me how I was going to, you know, cut my hair, shave your face. You can't do this. You can't do that. You got to wear this at this time and be at this place. And it was rough, you know, for a while, but you, you get used to it. You kind of fall into it. And like I said, when I, when I switched over uh, to the new job, it, it kind of took all that away and I kind of got to enjoy the military for what it was, you know, like boys being boys. It was it was basically like, you know, you were men and you said, like, if you had an issue with somebody, regardless of what their rank was, you could address it. And there was no no chance that you're going to get in trouble. You know what I mean? As long as you weren't out of control and like, right. you know, but it, it that helped a lot, too, I think. Yeah, I guess I, I could never be be told what to do. And you mentioned like how, you, how to cut your hair and shave your face. I almost quit a job. <laughs> uh, at one point because um, I got a new director of sales uh, when I was in radio back in like 2014, I guess it was. And he came in thinking he had a big swinging dick. And, you know, he's like, you know, everyone's going to put up, getting put up on a 90 day probation period to see if like you're going to fit, you know, my leadership. And I had been in, I had been in the media business already at that point for almost 10, 11 years. Um, and I had this shithead who like was a drunk. Um, you know, I knew him in a, in a previous life and I don't think he remembered meeting me because he was either drunk or, you know, some, some kind of all the altered mental state. But, um, and he came in and he's like, you, and every every sales guy, he was like, you know, we're going to uh, performance plan and make sure you're going to be, you know, part of my team and blah, blah, blah. And um, he like tried bringing like the uh, handbook into the conversation. And he's like, I had a beard, right? And um, I mean, my beard's not out of control. It's, you know, it's not, I guess, like trimmed close to the face. So he tried to like bring this and he goes, you know, we, we have an issue and we, we, we need you to consider, you know, ma you know, kind of trimming that up. And I said, I said, okay, it was a Friday. So I said, all right, well, um, 
I'll take the weekend to think about it. And um, this was like post weekender days. And again, I was in radio, I was selling, um, you know, uh, I was in sales for rock 107. It's a classic rock station. I was selling all 92 or at the time it was fuzz, which is an alternative station. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not meeting with doctors or lawyers and things like that. Like, it didn't make sense to me. And I, I went the weekend, I was actually in AC that weekend. And I was like, I was like going to go to work and start like a campaign saying like, like save pop goes beard. And I was going <laughs> to, and I was going to swear to God, I was going to, I was going to raise money. I was talking to my wife, like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to boycott this. I'm going to raise a ton of fucking money. I'm going to donate it to a good cause in spite of this motherfucker. <laughs> and, um, I went to work that, that next Monday and, um, he said, well, what's your decision? And I'm like, I don't think I, I may have like, I think I may have like, just like formed it better, but I didn't cut the length off. I said, no, I, I did. I, I, I took care of it. And, um, I don't think he liked that too much, but you know, it was funny cause he brought the handbook in, into the, the whole scenario. And I'm like, it's a guy that works on the third floor who has a beard down to his stomach. Like, yeah, if you want to, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to play games, like we're going to, we'll do that. That's fine. But he ended up getting fired a month later because he came to work drunk, but <laughs> sounds like a great, sounds like a great leader. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a story for a different day, but, <laughs> but I mean, that's like the point of the story is, is like, I just, I don't think I could have been told what to do. Like, I mean, that's the kind of shit that I was like, I had a guy tell me to trim my beard up and I was like, no, no, if you're getting yelled at like, you know, hardcore, it's just something I, I couldn't do. So again, thank you. And thank you to everyone who has served and put their time in and, protected our country and got yelled at so that I didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Getting yelled at is a big part of it. Yeah. But I mean, it's also done a lot of great things. I mean, that it gives people structure. It gives people, you know, they, a lot of people need that. Um, so it's not all bad, but you, you mentioned adapting. Yeah. Um, and I think that could you know lead us into the next part of your life um, because you've adapted to civilian life. And you now own a uh, brewery called Back Mountain Brewing Company in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Um, so talk a little bit about that. I mean, like <laughs> you you opened you opened a, a brewery in the middle of a pandemic. Was it 2020 or 21? Yeah. Uh, well, we yeah 2021. Yep, 2021. Yeah. So I, I'm looking I'm looking over at my lovely wife just to confirm. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. So middle of a pandemic because you know it's kind of, it's kind of I guess it's over now, but probably the height of it almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, we moved home in 2020, um, the year prior, and we were working on um, acquiring the house we're living in now. It's my wife's old family home, and it's very that, nice. I like the yeah. wood. Oh, thank the not the naughty pine. Naughty pine, love it. Thank you. Um, so we were working on acquiring that. Uh, it needed a lot of work. Uh, we we used a VA loan. I won't get into details, but there are certain standards the house needs to be on before you can get your VA loan. So we had a couple months of work to do for that, and uh, we ended up closing on the house in January of 2021. And then I went immediately into brewery mode and started. Um, searching for financing, searching, tried SBA, but being that we were in the midst of the pandemic, they were like, breweries are high risk. Like, no, you can't, you can't get it. And uh, we we fortunately found a local lender that was actually ended up being better than the S- SBA uh, that that financed us to to get our feet feet in the door. Okay. Well, before, before we even get to that, like, you know, you didn't just, you know, wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going to be a brewer today. I'm going to make beer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I used to homebrew myself, I and mean, you could do that. You could wake up that day and say, "Yeah, I'm going to try this now." But I mean, to 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 be an official brewer and you know own a business, like you don't just wake up and do that. So, what did that look like leading up to the actual purchase of the uh, the building? So I think it was it was my probably my last deployment. Uh, we were in Afghanistan, and uh, my dog handler that was on my team, that the canine guy. Uh, was sitting there and he was ordering a bunch of stuff off the internet and I was sitting next to him on the other computer and I was like what like dude what are you buying like what what is that stuff and he's like oh I make beer at home he's like I'm upgrading my my homebrew system I was like cool like 
make beer at home. And he's like, oh yeah. He's like, when we get back, he's like, I'll totally show you. He's like, I'll, I'll take you down to the homebrew. I didn't even know there was like homebrew stores. I didn't know any of this. Like, this is all new to me. I was drinking Jameson or whatever IPA had the most alcohol in it. Like that's, that's what, you know, beer was to me. Like, you know, well, yeah, IPA 7.8%. Let's do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he got home uh he took me to the homebrew store and that was pretty much what kicked it off uh, i bought a book i bought a, a simple like just the dirtiest like extract brewing system you could buy and i made a batch of beer in my garage and i was like man this is cool like i've always liked cooking like i always enjoyed um you know getting my grandmother's and my mom's recipes and like doing like and to this day I still do it like on my day off that I get a week is usually like my cooking day like it's exciting for me like I'm gonna do something that takes me four hours five hours to cook you know I just I enjoy doing that and I think the brewing thing it, it kind of it intrigued me because I was like oh it's kind of like cooking only you know I can drink this and get drunk afterwards you know <laughs> like it's, it was it was neat and it just kind of like it became my hobby like you know a lot of guys want to go out and then you know we like we were still hiking and we were still enjoying the outdoors and everything that's in Washington. But at the same time, we were, I didn't really have a hobby. I, I've never been in the sports. I've never been a big, you know, I played sports in high school, but I just kind of fell off. Like I've never been a sports guy. You know, I'm a gamer. I love gaming. I was a big PC gamer for a long time until we opened the brewery, but don't have time for that anymore. Um, but I never really had like, a, like a hobby hobby. And I just kind of took to brewing. Like it was fun for me. And then I was like, Oh, you can compete. So then I was like, well, you got to have good beer if you can compete. So I started digging into it more. And I, and honestly, like, I didn't have anybody teach me everything I learned. I learned from, from the first book I got YouTube videos, reading blogs, reading forums, stuff like that. And then you just kind of, it progressed from there. And that was what, 2012, 2011, 2012, somewhere in there I started. And it probably didn't really kick off until say 2017, I think when I, bought like a true home brewing system, like a prefab, you know, top of the line. I sold my Harley Davidson to get the thing. Um, long story <laughs> short, I got, I got hit at a stop sign, uh, from behind dude broke my foot. Um, uh, I was in a, I was in a boot for the entire summer and I got back on the bike after that. And I was like, yeah, I just, I don't want to ride anymore. Like it wasn't fun for me. And I was like, you know what? I took the bike up to Harley. I was like, what do you give me for it? The thing was almost paid off. They gave me pretty much enough to, to buy that homebrew system. And that's what I did. And then I, it just, I re, I started competing really heavily at that point. Like I, I wanted to make, I would always, I was really hard on myself. I wanted my beers to taste like the beers I was buying in the store. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I worked really hard at that and it was just kind of a natural progression from there. Um, and then as I was getting ready to retire, we didn't know what I was going to do. We didn't know if we were going to stay in Washington. We didn't know if we were going to move back to PA. I was looking at um, Game Warden up in Maine. I was looking at Game Wardens here in PA. I was looking at all sorts of different jobs that I was going to do. And my my buddy came into work one day and he had a local magazine and he threw it down. He's like, hey, they're starting a brewing program down at South Puget Sound. And I was like, wow, like, okay. And then I was like, yeah, that'll never work. Like opening a brewery, like you can't open a brewery. Like, it's just, that's, that's like a pipe dream. You know what I mean? Like home brewers don't open breweries. You know, you just sit in your garage and make beer and talk shit about everybody else's beer. You know, like that was what, that was, that was my mindset. And as I got closer, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll apply to the program. And there was only, I don't remember what it was. There's only a handful of slots, like 35 slots or something. And they basically did, I, I guess it would be like an order of merit list. Like if you already had English and math done, you were, you were already pushed to the top. So I was doing uh, online school through the military. They were paying for it. It wasn't even out of my GI bill or anything. And I rushed to get, I think it was math. I rushed to get the math done and I got it done. I got my transcripts and I sent it into the program and it put me to the top of the list. I got, well, let me just say I got accepted the program and then that's where uh, like I said earlier, I had ended up talking to my command and I was like, Hey, like this program's starting, I know I can get six months. Can you guys give me 12 months so I can start this program when it kicks off? And it was like the stars aligned and it just worked out perfect. They signed off on everything. And I started the program right when it started. And that's really kind of where I would say, um, like homebrewing, like, you know, a lot, like I knew a lot. I thought I knew a lot. 
that program filled in all the gaps that I didn't have, you know, you get to meet these guys that have been brewing for, you know, 12, some of them 30 years and you get to talk to them and the whole program was you go from like our weekends were spent at breweries just going around and where a lot of the students are like ogling the equipment and everything. I'm, I was talking to the brewers. I was talking to the owners and I had, I still, to this day, I have this huge word document in my computer um, of notes. I would take everywhere I went like what works, what doesn't work. Like, what are you guys doing that's special? And, and, and just everything I, I, I tried to pick up everything I could pick up because at this point I figure I'm going to get this degree in, in applied science for craft brewing. Like I'm pretty, I, I was almost all in at that point. It's like, what else am I going to do? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to spend a year. I'm out of the military. Now I've got another year of school left. Like, what am I going to do? So it was kind of like, you're all in. So you just kind of, you go all in and you just kind of figure it out, you know? Yeah. So what does school look like? I mean, outside of visiting. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. So it wasn't, we didn't just visit breweries. Uh, It was, it was a neat program. It was, it wasn't just like, Hey, this is how you brew. It was um, this is how you brew. This is the science behind it. Um, This is, you know, we learned, we did everything from chemistry, which was terrible for me because I hadn't done math in 20 plus years. And there's a lot of math and chemistry that was, probably the hardest for me we did you know microbiology we did a lot of like a lot of labs because there's i mean brewing is science believe it or not and i'm not a scientist i'm not a chemist like it's amazing it's amazing if you told me in high school like hey johnny um pay attention to chemistry and science class because one day you could brew your own beer i would have been like fuck yeah let's do it i'm gonna pay attention now (laughs) right back then i was like that wasn't even a, a a an option. Yeah. And I was, I was stoked. Like I was so like, I knew all like the, the, you know, the base stuff, but I wanted to, I wanted to get smarter and it kind of crushed me when I did the chemistry and I did the microbiology because you realize just how much you don't know. And that was really kind of like, that was the wake up call for me. I was like, okay, I need to, I need to figure this out. And to this day, I'll tell anybody that comes into the brewery, like you want to learn to brew, like I'll talk all day about brewing, but I'm not a chemist. I'm not a microbiologist. I know how the shit works, but I'm going to tell you in the simplest, dumbest way, because that's how I can articulate it. I'm not going to sit up here, you know what I mean? And talk chemistry to you because it's not me, but I picked what I needed from it. And there's a lot, it's, it's with anything you learn, like anything you go to school for, there's stuff in there that you can just throw out, you know, and that whole program, I picked everything that I needed, you know, from it. And, um, the big, I think one of the big ones was I needed an internship. It was either an internship or like two other classes. And I was like, well, I'll get an internship. And there was a brewery right across from, from the base and it was run by another veteran. And I was fortunate enough to get in there and I pick, I picked his brain, man. Like I just everything and he was running it. He'd only been open, I think two years at the time. Um, and it was just, it was a great learning experience. And I was fortunate because I was responsible and after a couple of weeks, he just kind of turned me loose. He was like, here, like brew, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, the system, you know how everything works. He was like, just brew. And he would give me the recipes and I would just brew. And I loved it. I loved going in there. I loved just working on the system. I love the mechanical side of it, everything about that. Um, and that's really what opened my eyes. And that's kind of where it, where it clicked. I was like, yeah, I can do this. Like I can, you know, it's not a pipe dream. Like I can actually make this happen. I just have to be smart about it. I can't, you know, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Like take it slow. Look at, look at what's going on. Look at your demographic, look at where you're going. And even at that point, we didn't know if we were staying in Washington. I had a plan to stay there um, with two other guys, former Green Berets and open our own brewery. But where we were living in Washington, like there were, I don't know, six, seven, eight breweries within like, you know, 15, 20 minute driving range. Like they were all over. Like you could throw a rock and hit a brewery. And it just got to the point where I was like, you know what, man, like, let's, let's go home. Like, let's go home and open a brewery in the back mountain. And that's pretty much what led us here. In the middle of a pandemic. And then, well, and that, yeah, well, that was, uh, we had decided to move home and then the pandemic hit and then that screwed, that really screwed school up, um, a lot. They were there. I mean, God bless the program, program director. He was amazing. Um, the guy did everything he could do. And, on another note, I'll just give him a shout out of Frank. If you ever watch this podcast, you're amazing, dude. He was honestly, man, that guy, I could go to him with anything. And he would, if he didn't know the answer, he would find it for me. 
And that dude taught me so much. So I will say, Frank, good job. But yeah, we <laughs> we were already planning on moving home and then the pandemic hit and that just kind of, everything just kind of went to shit after that. Like it was, it was kind of wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole world shut down and um, I mean, we're still recovering, obviously, when we're, I won't get into the politics and the, 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 the unfortunate situation we're in with inflation i'm sure every day you're experiencing what that's like with your uh cost of goods and all that kind of stuff but oh yeah um and then so so you're in the back mountain so like if anyone is watching or listening to this and is familiar with the back mountain um the building that you're in used to be the twin stacks it was also metro bar and grill um some irish bar for like a day yeah. <laughs> i was like shocked i was shocked and they opened that up and i think it was gone like three months later um so you're in a spot right so it's like i think it was also like i i feel like um they moved to uh carverton road in trucksville some kind of um kava, oh, yeah like a kava corner vape shop type thing yeah they they had the spot um two people before they were they had it and then a glass company had the spot and then we got the spot yeah i mean i absolutely love that location i mean i was i went there we had our post um ring ceremony like luncheon there back in high school like i just i always loved the um that building my brother used to work at metro um so i, I just i loved it i mean the, the visually it's very appealing and I think what you're using it for, like, it's just perfect. It has like, I keep screwing this up. We talk about the, the mechanical stuff, the, um, the, oh, boil- the, the boi- yeah, the boilers the and the, all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's just a really cool place. But what I'm getting at is it's almost like the, the building is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew just, I'm looking at charity. Charity's just like, we we know we've heard it we've heard it all man we've heard you guys, it. well you're you what you guys are here to break the curse okay that's 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 yeah. what we're that's what we're that's what you're doing okay we're gonna break the curse I mean the Red Sox broke the curse of Babe Ruth 2004 it can be done and I feel like it could be you in fact no. I know it's gonna be you so <laughs> but I mean like talk about that I mean obviously you knew the history you you, you grew up in the back mountain like. What, why, why that place? Why, why? So we were home. We came home. Was it a year, a year prior? Way before that. I don't remember. But anyway, we were driving. We, we were home on leave. We were home visiting. Um, it was the summer in between school. Like it was the summer I retired. And then I had to go back to Washington to finish school. Uh, and we were just kind of like driving around looking, you know, at places like what's available. Like, is, is this even possible? Like, can we do this? And we saw the twin stacks was there. So we went up, uh, just had a look at it. And I thought, you know what, this, this like looks really cool. Like this could be a small, a small brewery. Um, I'll touch more on the the small side and why we went the size we did, but the whole idea was to keep it small and keep it manageable to where me and my wife could, could basically run it. Um, So we looked at the spot, went back to Washington we talked and talked and talked we came back home and started like seriously looking at this point and we were looking at what was available pretty we we knew we wanted to be <laughs> i don't know how far your your viewers are but we always say you know through the rock cut you know through the rock cut in the back mountain like back mountain like dallas you know somewhere dallas lehman somewhere out in that area you know we wanted to be in the back mountain and honestly like what was available out of everything we looked at um that was the most economical for one which blew my mind um and two it was just it just it seemed to fit it and i sat and we sat in there and it 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 looks nothing like it did when we got the spot like i took pictures um before i started doing anything in there any of the like knocking down walls and tearing up tile and all that stuff and i sat there and i was just like okay this can go here this can go here i didn't have measurements or anything i was just like yeah this looks like this looks like it'll fit and i was like yeah let's let's make it happen i mean obviously it not everything went to plan, but it almost went almost according to exactly what I 
what I had envisioned for it, like how we had everything set up. Granted, we don't have as much space as I thought we would have. Um, we're certainly outgrowing the space uh, rapidly. Um, we, we had one of the guys that that uh, does maintenance around the whole Twin Stack Center come in and he's like, wow, you guys are really outgrowing the space quickly. And I was like, yeah, man. And that was like two weeks ago. I was like, yeah, like we're really like we need more space already, but it's good that we're where we're at. And we started as small as we did. So we didn't have, um, you know, issues with like overhead and, you know, right. like I said before, like biting off more than you can chew. And that's why that spot is just, it, it works perfect for us. There's enough room, you know, we can have the bands, we can have events and stuff in there. We got the little patio outside. I mean, it's not great. It's not like when you go down to Trogues or something, but it works. It works for our area and and people are really kind of taken to that you know the whole hometown like this is your brewery and we've always presented it as that like this is your brewery like this is for you guys like this is the back mountain brewery this is for the people in the area and we've got a pretty good following of regulars like just people in the area that come there and drink so i mean for the record i mean trogues didn't become trogues overnight oh no 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 no! i just used an example because <laughs> i know i know like, I yeah them. it's wild there's they're still adding on i think they like added a huge parking lot and all that kind of stuff. That's a, that's an amazing uh, facility down there in Hershey. But, uh, but yeah, so <clears throat> in the back mountain, I mean, it's a great spot. Um, talk a little, bit, a little bit about what you do on site. Well, we make everything on site. Um, well, everything that's on tap, we do, we have seven beers on tap. We have one seltzer. I started making seltzer, uh probably right before summer kicked off um just because i couldn't keep up with the beer to have eight beers on tap uh we we did have a cider on tap for a while from braces orchard out in orange which is not far from us uh we switched to bottles at this point because we've kind of gotten into a, a into a flow now and i can kind of move beer a little quicker like it it, it kind of works out now i pulled the cider off so we do have seven beers one seltzer on tap. We do pretty much everything on site. Um, we make pickle shots with vodka that we get the vodka and our whiskey from uh, Stolen Wolf down in Lidditz, PA, which is, I guess, down by Lancaster. They ship to us. I don't go down and pick it up, obviously. Uh, we serve local wine, local food. Um, we don't have a kitchen. That was one thing I didn't want to, I didn't want to dive into. I didn't want to deal with employees because honestly like right now which is her and i running it and the assistant brewer that i have it like we're already stretched thin and to hire somebody else on and have a kitchen and i know that was a huge um turnoff in this area because people they want their restaurants and when we were opening um we got a lot of emails and a lot of messages on facebook like what kind of food are you going to have what's your menu like they were more interested in what kind of food we we're going to have than what kind of beer we were going to make and that was kind of that was kind of a punch in the gut for me like it, it i realized like i we have two friends that own restaurants within three minutes of me and i get i get how the area is like people want they want to come in like you know they don't care if you make the beer or not they they just want to eat the food and then you've got some beer on tap they want an ipa you know what i mean like i kind of wanted to break that kind of break that cycle in the area because back west where we were there were breweries like doing what i'm doing with the food trucks and everything else and it worked and like it worked really well and like we i won't say we fought with the borough we didn't fight with the borough i worked with the borough for months and months and months just to get an ordinance so i could have food trucks in there you know and because because no, nobody's doing it in this area yeah you go out to wilkes or scranton and stuff yeah they had the food trucks at the breweries the cideries and wineries but nobody was doing it here and i kind of wanted to to bring that to the back mountain and in so far it seems to be working like people oh what food truck do you have this weekend you know just because we don't have a kitchen doesn't mean you right. know that we're that we're not making good beer and that's i, I don't know to me <laughs> when i go out to a brewery i i'm there for the beer i don't care if they have food or not if they have hot pretzels i'm good yeah if they have beer even better you know what i mean like well, i think one of your signs on the door says you know there is no food or byo byo F, yeah, because like you focus on the beer, which is one thing that I always hated about some restaurants was they tried to cater to everyone. Like, mm-hmm. I love a restaurant that has a very small menu. I, I, I'm a big 
um, a bit big on like um, quality over quantity. Like if you have a menu, you can, you can nail every time and, and it's, it's kick-ass every time. Like I'd rather have five items to choose from than 50. Yeah. There was a, a restaurant, um, it was located in, at the Edwardsville shopping center. I think it was called like five star cuisine and they wanted to have a menu that had um, five different like uh, cuisines, like American, Italian, um, Japanese, like they have five different, like, and I'm like, how do you even maintain like inventory on some yeah. of this stuff? Like that's, I mean, how much of this is frozen? How much is food is going bad? Like that's not. And who's your chef that's, making these five-star <laughs> meals from five different cuisines you know what yeah. i mean yeah it's so i what i'm saying is i love the fact i love the idea of just like being good at what you're good at yeah and then also like you're doing these food trucks what, what do, you, do you alternate every week or every two weeks every week every week we well with the ordinance that the borough put in place for us we can't have the same food truck more than three days in a row or okay. we can't have yeah, the same food truck more than three days in a row or more than 15 days in a month, which is fine because there's there's enough food trucks out there. Granted, in, in, the, in the wintertime, it gets a little slim trying to find the ones that are still running in the winter. Um, but we've we've got a couple good ones, a couple solid ones, a couple regular ones that, you know, we book them out, you know, or I should say my wife books them out anywhere from three to six months out, you know, just to know to lock those dates in to get them yeah. there. But how cool is that? Where I can come try new beers that you're you have on tap, and then also, you know, new food. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. We have some food trucks that come outside of uh, Axelrod every now and then, um, and they've all been great. Yeah, it's most just, of the majority of them, man. I'd say ninety ninety eight percent of them are awesome. Like they're they're just people doing what I'm doing. They're just trying to run a business, you know. Yeah, and those talk. Go ahead. Those talk about us guys, though. I don't know about them. <laughs> the verdict is still out about those guys i don't know i don't know those guys <laughs> they're they're one of our they're one of our good trucks get him out of there brian's, brian's gonna watch this he's gonna be like i watched that podcast that's uh, all he's he gonna say. He, i told you so when we were brewing that day i told you i was gonna bust his balls because uh we were talking about doing t-shirts and he went somewhere else and uh, I said I was either going to make a best friend that day or an enemy. I don't I don't know about that. I don't know how that went. He's he's pretty easy going, man. No, I'm, sure, I'm sure he got it. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know about those guys. <laughs> they're they're one of the, the good ones I talked about. They're one yeah, of them. Yeah. They're, they were actually one of the first food trucks we had in. Uh, oh, actually, funny story about Brian. So I was out in Washington, and I was uh, the second brewery I was working at. I was I was driving up there to work. And I was, I, I called, you know, I, I won't name names, but I called almost every brewery in the area, all the way from Tunkhannock out to Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. And I just asking questions, like simple, like stuff that I, I was where like, what's the regulations on water? Like, how do you guys, how do you guys uh, do your, your wastewater? Because one of the things that the, the last brewery I worked at was we had to pump all our water into a tank and we had to check the pH on it. And if the pH was off, it was out of this certain range. We had to adjust the pH of that 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 wastewater before we could flush it into the sewer. And little things like that are like, where are you getting your chemicals from? Like, where do you guys where are you guys sourcing from? Are you using you know Country Malt Group? Are you using BSG? Like, what's you know just asking questions here and there. And I called uh, SBC, and Brian was working up there at the time. He was the manager up there. And they, I was like, hey, can I talk to like one of the brewers or the managers or somebody? I was like, I'm I'm thinking of moving home and opening a brewery. And Brian was the guy I got to talk to. Didn't know it at the time because he didn't have the food truck or anything. And, you know, he was awesome. I talked to him for probably 40 minutes on the phone, told me everything he, he knew, you know, really smart guy. He's coming from Colorado. And the one thing he said, he's like, hey, man, it's like, just keep in mind. He's like, this area, he's like, we're anywhere from five to 10 years behind where you're at out on the West Coast, beer wise, like brewery wise. I was like, OK, you know, something to keep in mind, like, OK, uh, we ended up moving back. And I don't even remember somebody was like, oh, you should hit up my my buddy. Brian's got a taco truck. And I was like, hmm. so I talked to him and I was like, God, your voice sounds really familiar. And the first time he came in, I was like, you used to work at SBC. And he was like, I did. And I was like. Dude, I talked to you like a year and a half ago on the phone when I was still in Washington. <laughs> and we just kind of hit it off from there. And him and him and Don have been have been great coming down um, with their taco truck, regardless of where they get their t-shirts from. Just, <laughs> <you guys. laughs> oh, I'm 
unbelievable, Brian. All those, <laughs> all those quotes I gave you. All the time I spent. <laughs> all for nothing. All for nothing. Just a laugh at my face. And they had the nerve to wear those shirts that day we were there. Too. Yeah, when they were working. How dare them? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It was funny though, because I was like, that that print, I said, this print's no good. And looks at me, looks at the guy behind him. He goes, I don't know, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I, said, I said, dude, I'm just kidding. They look great. I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> but you also um you're you're near uh, Bernie's pizza. Oh yeah. I mean, talk about heritage, talk about uh, you know being a piece of the back mountain i mean well and the, the owner of bernie's uh jill we actually graduated with her she's she's a lehman alum okay uh, so when we came back she was actually the one that uh directed me to the company that we ended up getting our business loan from because she'd used them in the past and that's how I, I i actually got linked up with them um they've been nothing but great like if we have a food truck fall through we'll go down there and we buy we buy bulk bulk uh par baked pizzas so we'll have like a bernie's pizza night or whatever um we're looking at trying to get she also does uh handmade soaps and everything we're looking at trying to get some of those into the brewery um bernie's has just been <laughs> bernie's is kind of like i don't know i don't know what you'd call it there it's just been like a, a symbiotic l- relationship with them like you know she comes in we give her good beer we go down there we get good pizza like you can't beat it and then right down the road is uh, three guys as well, which the owner of three guys we graduated with. And they were the first place that I put my beer on. Joe came down. Um, Joe and I did actually, I worked at three guys through high school with Joe when his old man still owned it. And uh, we did our senior project at three guys and Joe came down and had some of my beer. And he's like, well, put this on tap. And I said, okay, what do you want? And Joe's had my beer on tap now for pretty much the whole summer, right up through fall. And he's going to keep it on. We're gonna be swapping them out, whatever he wants. I'll I'll make it. We're doing a blueberry beer right now because Joe wanted a blueberry beer, as did a bunch of customers. As much as I don't enjoy brewing them, but we'll make them because people like to drink them. So sure. <laughs> well, the common theme too is from what I gather and what I hear is is community. You know, the back mountain is very community driven. Uh, you, you mentioned the the rock cut before, and I feel like. You know, there's you know, once you make it through the rock cut, um, you're kind of like if if you're heading home from work and you make it through there, like you're home for the night. Like you, you go to Three Guys for takeout, or you go to Bernie's for takeout, you stop at Back Mountain Brewing for a, a beer, or whatever it may be. Um, and I think that kind of gets to, um, you know, how you and I hooked up for what we're doing, um. And that is brewing uh, a porter. And like I said earlier, the, the proceeds of that were are gonna go back to uh our Lake Lehman High School junior and senior high music program. Um we got a lot of coverage in the paper. The system's voice was kind enough to put us on the front cover or front page rather. Pretty neat. That may have been my first time on the front page in my all my uh my time in media. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> above above the fold. Above the fold. You learned something new that day, but um, you know, Times Leader, shout out to them. They, they did a nice coverage. We're going to go on PA Live um, when this podcast airs. I, I believe that you know this is um, my, my plan is to put this out on October twelfth, and then Pop Goes Porter will be available on October thirteenth exclusively at Back Mountain Brewing Company. Um, and I just can't thank you enough for you know entertaining the idea. Um, I had this idea for. Our, I forget how long it was. I, I feel like it may have been like last summer. I want to say it had to have been last summer, but it was like right before fall. And I always felt like a Porter was more of a fall beer. That's, that's, that's right. Right. I mean, darker beer. I mean, people yeah. generally tend to go towards the darker beers right. and the colder ones. And I wanted to do a porter because I'm I'm selfish and I wanted to call it Pop Goes Porter. And I just like, <clears throat> I remember I was actually talking to somebody else who I won't name. And um, I was talking to him because he had a connection with another brewery. 
And I kind of brought up the idea, and he's like, he's like, dude, like maybe pump the brakes a little bit. Like, do you even have like, I mean, what 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 do you have to offer the brewery in return for them even entertaining your idea? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. He kind of like, he kind of took the wind out of my sails. So like, you know, whatever it may be. So I sat on it, and then I don't even know how like. I mean, a year later, I wanted it to do it. And then you came in and we had been working together at Axel Rad and you were, um, you know, getting shirts done and hats done and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I think I presented it in a way like I was like, hey, dude, like I have this idea and you can tell me if I'm stupid or crazy. That's <laughs> no, that's, I think that's exactly how it went, honestly. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, like, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I, I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm not oblivious. I'm not like whatever. But I can't tell you how much it means to me that you would even entertain the idea and then further than that, just making it a reality. Like, it's wild. Well, that's honestly, man, like, that's what, like, the best times I've ever had, like, through this whole brewing thing have always been working with other people and doing collaborations. Like, it's one thing to come in and brew the same hazy over and over again, because that's what everybody wants to drink. You know what I mean? It's, it's nice when you can do something different and kind of step out of that, like, to me, working with anybody, it doesn't have to be another brewery, you know, granted, I love collabing, like we did the collab with Breaker and Five Mountains, like, that was, that was a blast, I had a blast doing that, like, it was so much fun, and I missed that, I kind of missed that from Washington, so when you brought it up to me, I was like, yeah, because it's, it's, it's still a collaboration, like, you don't have to be a brewer to collab on it, yeah. and it's like, why, it's not taking, you know, it's not hurting me any, if anything, it's helping us, you know, so I don't know why, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to get get me i don't know why somebody would say like what are you offering to the brewery like i don't need anything i don't need you to offer me anything like you're not getting anything from this the school's getting everything from this you know what i mean it's a great idea i don't know why yeah and i I understand this point also it's like you know i mean obviously i would never want to like you know get anything in return that i wasn't also putting out but like i knew that it wasn't just a, a way for me to brew a beer it was it was a way when i started this podcast i wanted it not to just be a podcast but also just be this platform for good where it's you know promoting musicians and and talking about music but also promoting our local businesses and i think that you know this collaboration is doing all of that it's you know we're we're talking about you know your business you also brought in you know i I didn't want to do just a regular porter i want it to be something like creative and you mentioned coconut and i'm like i fucking hate coconut man <laughs> Love I, coconut. I said what about what about a, a coffee porter and you're like yeah we could do that and i have a coffee guy so you brought matt into the fold from uh bean nick who's also a back mountain based uh coffee company um so like for me this whole thing was like just great it was it was a a way to showcase you and what you guys do you know you brought matt into the fold where it could showcase his product and ultimately you know the 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 greatest thing of all is is giving back to our high school the music program because as we all know like those programs uh year after year continue to be cut i mean your daughter is in uh lake lehman school district she's in the arts programs I mean, you guys witnessed it firsthand. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pumped. Like, I mean, it's it's obnoxious to have my name on it. <laughs> no, it looks good. The labels look good. I showed you the labels today. They have my stupid face on it, which is just wild. It just the whole thing. Like, I hate I hate all of it. Like, I hate having my name on this podcast. <laughs> I hate having my name on the beer. But like the alliteration factor, pop goes porter. Like. And like I said, when I started this, people smarter than me were like, dude, you have to have your name on it because people know who you are. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've, I'll forever be grateful for um, the opportunities that I've, that I've been afforded um, throughout my career. And this is just a great opportunity for me to use my platform and use my voice and use everything I've built over the past 18, whatever years it was, it's been to, to continue doing good things and i started this podcast off by raising money for the local music scene by i think we raised almost ten thousand dollars you know for musicians um when the pandemic hit 
uh, which is, I, I think is something that, you know, when you, when you talk about doing benefits, right, you, you always think about, well, who can we get to play it? Like what, what band's going to draw people in and, you know, have people come out and you know spend 10 bucks to, to walk in the door and for the donation. And, you know, we never, we never came back, back to the bands, like not that they ever wanted anything. They, they never asked for anything. They were happy to donate their time, but like, you know, it was, it was a time where they needed us for once, you know, oh, yeah. you know there was, they, they, they couldn't play shows. They couldn't perform. So I think it was the first time in at least the history of our area that we were able to give back to them. So I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud to be able to, you know, team up with you and Matt and uh, do this beer collaboration, not only because um, I like beer, I didn't get this, this dad bod by just being a dad. Oh, exactly. Um, a few, a few beers were had. <laughs> but so thank you i mean i'm excited well thank you man and and you know charity and i are both super stoked like we think this is going to be a great thing and we're happy. we don't care that your name's on the label i think it's a great thing i think it's cool <laughs> like, i really do the, the response it, is, it sounds right it sounds right it sounds right it sounds next, right we'll do pop goes pilsner next year <laughs> You're not gonna get <laughs> you open the door, bro. I'm I'm locking in. <laughs> I want to own half that brewery by the time. But uh Post no, I'm, order. What else is there? There's there's I actually had a list the other day because they were making fun of me, not making fun. They were like, Oh, dude, you could do this next. Um no, but um yeah, so the beer's gonna be available like like so when this this airs, it'll be tomorrow, October 13th. Um, what time do you open on Thursday the 13th? Three. Three, three o'clock. So, I mean, we've, based on the uh, the buzz we've gotten around the two articles in the Citizen's Voice and Times Leader, this should be a success. Oh, I, I would think so. I would honestly, like, with just the people coming in, yo, can you save me a four-pack? And, you know, I won't be around, like... When's it coming out? Is I th- I thought it was out now, and it's yeah. We get a lot. We've had a lot of customers coming in already asking for it, and I'm like, thirteenth, like it'll be out thirteenth. Like, yeah. I have my friends from Colorado. Can, hey, can you ship me a four pack? I'm like, I don't know the legalities of that. No, you can just send it UPS. Don't okay. send it USPS. <laughs> <laughs> don't take my word for it, but I'm like ninety percent sure that that's the way to go. We'll see. I don't feel like having the front of money for that. Get that bozo. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but I, I think it's gonna be awesome. And like, and we talked about community, and like, I feel like a brewery. And I, I mentioned this in the uh, interview with the Citizens Voice. Like, I think breweries have the opportunity to be like cornerstones of 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 a community and just like give back in in ways like you know we're doing to the uh, Lake Lehman Music Program, but. It's such a, you're not just brewing beer. I mean, like you're offering a place for people to meet and, and, and talk and get to know each other. I mean, you're doing yoga from what I've seen on online, you're doing trivia nights, you're op- even opportunities to food trucks that it's, I mean, it's it, it, what you have is, is a great, great thing. And I'm proud of you. And um, I can't thank you enough for even entertaining my idea. Oh, thanks man. It was like you said, that's what Charity and I are, that's what we're going for. Like, I, I mean, it sucks sometimes being there, you know, six days a week and, you know, some days, you know, I'm running the taps and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to be here. But at the same time, it's, it's cool to see, you know, just the year that we've been here, um, the reception it's got. And, you know, I, I, I wore my, I love cream ale shirts, but we also have the drink local shirts. And that's the one thing we want to push is like, you don't have to drive, you know, up to Vermont to get a hazy IPA. Like I got one of those. Come on in, you know. It's very good. <laughs> Thank you. I've Come on in, see my wife because she's always smiling and she's always she happy. Greek. I know. I, How I don't does know. she do that? How does she do that? She's Charity. A great, she's a great person. <laughs> How do you do it? Did you find a picture yet? Oh. Save the day. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh my we... God. Show that picture. 97. That's 90, that's 97. Did you at one point have dreads? No, I did. I had uh no, at one point in high school I I had really long 
hair. You had frosted. I I didn't have frosted tip stuff. <laughs> I had really long hair. It was long and curly. It was curly, but I could like pull it down to like. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I had. I had super long. Yeah. All right, well, show the show the other picture. Come on, come on. I I only have five listeners. Don't worry about it. That was in that was in like Germany, wasn't it? I don't know. I'm not showing that picture. No, you have more than five lists. I'm not showing that picture. <laughs> All right. When I hit stop, show it to me. <laughs> I will. I will. You hit stop. All right. Well, you know, it's it's such a uh, it's a great thing what you're doing and in the, in the business you have in the back mountain. And it's to take a, a risk, to take the gamble and, and say, you know what, we're doing this. Um is awesome. I mean, it's a great spot. I mean, I'm happy that it's a brewery and not some like, I don't know, name any other business. Bar? <laughs> no, I mean, the bar was cool. The bar was cool. Even like, I, I mean, visually it's like, it's very appealing to me. So I'm, I'm happy that it's been able to like be an entertainment venue, but a brewery is even better. I mean, I have a, I have a soft spot in my heart for breweries because I love beer. I love going to breweries. Um, it was awesome to, uh, you know, I'm not just putting my name on this beer. I actually kind of helped you brew it oh, that you day. No, you're a big help, man. I wouldn't say that. I mean, <laughs> you were the one, one weighing out all the materials. And, and I mean, I just dumped a bag of uh, uh, grain, grains in the. Yeah, but you cleaned the mash ton out. Remember that? I did clean the mash ton out. That was a big deal. I'm excited for that video to come back from uh, Ionic Development. That's going to be cool. Oh, I forgot all about that. It's yep. going to actually prove that I was working that day, not just uh, hanging out drinking beer. That was uh, that was an interesting. Everywhere I went, I went back to like grab some hops out of the cooler, and I turn around, and there's a camera right there, and I'm like, oh, don't come back in this room. Like, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not the nice area of the brewery. Yeah, this is not the fun area, but well. I'll let you go in a minute. Um, what's what's next for Back Mountain Brewing Company? Like, what are you? I mean, we're we're in October of 2022. Um, what's your what's your vision for? I won't even ask for like five years. Like, what's 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 next year look like? What do you what do you hope to accomplish? I mean, the 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 end goal is, and honestly, like, if you're not <laughs> if you're not constantly like trying to get better, trying to get bigger, trying to, you know keep moving forward then then what's the point and i think that's i it's a blessing and a curse with me like i'm constantly uh i'm always focused on what's next like i i i it's hard for me to get complacent um we're honestly like right now we're already to the point um with a one barrel system we're we're outgrowing it like we out honestly like we outgrew it in the first six months we were open but it really comes down to finances it comes down to you know just um opportunities presenting themselves but um we we are going to expand um we are we we've been talking for months and months and months uh, as much as we we love our food trucks i think it's great um but when we do expand we're obviously uh, it's the next step the next thing is to as much as i hate to say it uh, put in a kitchen um, i have an idea but I, it won't be, it's not going to be a restaurant. We're not going to, we'll never be a restaurant. I never want to be, I never want to be a restaurant. I never want to, I never want people to focus more on us because of our food than they do about our beer. Right. So when it does happen, it'll be like you said, a simple, you focus on, you know, those one, two, three things you're good at. And that's all you make. And if people don't want that, then honestly, at this point, and it sounds crappy to say, like, I don't care. Like, I want the people that want to come in and drink my beer. You know, if you want X, Y, and Z from the menu, even better. But I, I want the people that are interested in the beer. I want the people that are going to come in, taste the beer and, and sit and talk to me about it and, you know, tell me what they like or don't like or, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know when it's going to be five years, three years, 10 years, wh whatever, you know, but that's always, we got to keep moving forward. Like that's always the goal. There's always something you know, further down the road. So we'll get there eventually, but we're doing good and we're on track. So good. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. I have an idea. Yes. I won't tell, I won't, I won't uh, say it on, on record. 
You gonna let me know? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after you show me the picture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we're done, when we're done here, I have an idea. I have another business venture that I wanted to uh, explore. Okay. So maybe we can partner with that too. Okay. So I'll, that's all I'll say about that. So if if one day it comes out where I say Clay, that motherfucker stole my idea. <laughs> this is the day it happened. Dude, I'm all about stealing. I'm telling you, man. Like, I'm not. I'm not don't doing s- anything different. I just took ideas from a hundred different places I've been. Don't tell me you're I, gonna steal my idea. But I'm not saying I'm gonna steal your idea. It's say. gold. I already bought the website domain. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> Popco's cupcakes, or what are we no, doing? No, it's it's better than that. Wait do you hear it? Even better. Wait do you hear it? It doesn't have my name in it. No, nope. I, I got, I got, I, well, when you hit stop, I got one too. I'm going to run past you. So. All right. All right. <laughs> well, dude, um, I'm, I'm beyond excited about Popco's Porter releasing tomorrow, October 13th at Back Mountain Brewing Company. It's a coffee infused Porter uh, with a uh, coffee source from Bean Nick Coffee Company. Um, yeah. I mean, you're, you're confident we're going to sell out. I mean, I think you're right. Um, maybe we didn't brew enough, but. It's it's cool that it's gonna be limited edition. The labels look cool, like you said. It's it's weird that my face is on it, my name's on it, but it's cool. Um, I can't thank you enough. I really, I just, uh, uh, it, I, I never thought that I would have uh, a beer. Um, and in fact, a, a guy that lives in the back mountain. He he texted me. He's like, dude, I will be there at three o'clock on Thursday. I'm like, well, I will not be there that early. I will not be there that early. Uh, he's like, I never had a beer with a guy who, whose name was on it. I said, I honestly, I haven't either. But. I, I, well, well, talk about that off, off camera too. <laughs> All right. Well, best of luck with everything you do at Back Mountain Brewing Company. Um, where can people find you on uh, the social medias? Uh, Facebook, Instagram. We don't really, we have a Twitter. I don't use it because yeah. everyone Twitter. says that. Yeah. Uh, so just, just search Back Mountain Brew on uh, Instagram or Facebook and then www.backmountainbrew.com is our website. And on the website, you can go on there and there's a little link and you can click tap list or on tap or whatever it says. And you can see real time what we have on tap before you show up at the brewery. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you again. Thank you for your service. Um, happy to have you home uh, in NEPA, you know, brewing beer, making great beer. Um, I'm excited to try the uh, the porter because i had not tried it yet what if well, it sucks what if it sucks the co- the co- well this thing's airing before but we're whatever so anyway the coffee's going in tomorrow okay. so i'll let you know i'll give you an update uh 2 days from now okay yeah what if it sucks no it's going to be fine cuz the base is good i know i know uh i know mr labar makes amazing coffee so all it is is, I mean, unless I mess something up putting it in there, but it'll be fine. It'll Pressure's be on, buddy. Pressure's on. I know. Now I'm nervous, man. <laughs> now, I'm nervous. now I'm like, I don't know. We're, we're, we you better we wake up early. That, uh, we crossed that point of no return. We're like, if something gets messed up, I don't have time to make it again. So. It's in, it's in the, it's in print. I mean, the, the newspapers. Oh, no, I know. We're going we'll figure on. something out. I'll pull the stout out of the back and just like dump some, <laughs> dump some cold <laughs> brew in it and be like, here you go, pop those porter. We're going on PA Live. <laughs> it'll be fine it'll be good man i trust you I, I trust you so thank you again for everything and uh i'm looking forward we're going to be uh canning it the beer this weekend so that's cool yep yep so it'll be before this airs so when we're watching and listening to this is the beer will all, already have been canned at that point but looking forward to that too uh, it'll be fun. it's gonna be a it'll be a fun day sweet I got the I got the seamer today. I think I told you from yeah. Our, yeah. Shout five. out five now. <laughs> what's what's cool though is like so. I mean, what is it? There's five breweries in Luzerne County ish, right? Yeah, I got to look at. I I think it's seven. Cunningham's down there. I haven't been down there yet. Cunningham's down like the south end. I haven't even been down there. I didn't know they were there until I saw the Brewers Trail. But you guys, you guys all get along. You've all, you guys have done collaborations. It's it's, it's cool because, I, so I, you know, when I got into this whole scene, the the bar scene and things like that, it was very cutthroat. Like every bar, like mm-hmm. 
if a bar down the street from the other bar, like they wanted to have the biggest crowd, they wanted to take all the business from the bar next door. It's far different these days. Even 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 now, bars understand that if if you bring the people to that area, the chances of people going to this bar and maybe the one next door, whatever it might be, is is higher and, and, and better for everybody. And I think as uh, as brewers, you guys understand that again, it's community, it's everyone's making different beers, not the, not the same product. It's 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 a good thing for everybody. There's there's always there's always competition, but it's friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like there's always gonna be that that competition, but it's not like like you said, it's not cutthroat, you know. Right. Most breweries like if I need anything. Breaker, for example, I forgot to order two bags of grain on my last grain order. Shipping's stupid expensive. I text today. I was like, hey, are you guys putting in a grain order? I need two bags. He was like, yeah, we're putting one in. I'll let you know when it ships. What do you need? Like, just like that. He's throwing two bags of grain on there. Like, Brent's helped me out. I've helped Brent out down at Five Mountains. Like, it's just, and that's the way it should be. And that's what I always loved about, you know, the brewing community when I started to experience it out West. And that's, I was nervous moving back home, but, but I found that here and it's, it's neat to see that. I love, I love the camaraderie. I love the, the, the collaborations. I love the, the friendly competition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what it's really all about. For sure. Well, again, thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to great things from back mountain brewing company. Well, thank you, John. And we, me and charity both appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to do this for sure. Thank you. We'll see you soon. All right, we'll see you. Show what your small business sells in seven seconds.